Hi, this is Tim Sweeter of Brildia, and I want to introduce you to the Parallax Spinneret web server. Right here we have a PCB a prototype of the Spinneret module. And on the PCB we have the propeller IC in a QFP package. We have the WizNet W5100 IC. We also have over here uh, a RTC IC, real-time clock, with supercapacitor backup. We even have a micro SD card slot here in the center of the board, which is a bit unique. The card can slide in and out, and then you uh, slide it to lock it in. There's a user button here for programming uh, and interacting with your program. There's also a slew of LEDs here. Uh, one is a user LED that the uh, you could program through the propeller to blink, and the other LEDs are uh, connected to the WizNet chip for giving you status on the Ethernet. Up here we have a three-pin header that's for power. Uh, right now the the device accepts five, six, seven volt DC. Um, we also have the connection over here for the the prop plug, and here we have a, a connector for the MOBO line of products from Parallax. And again, this is a prototype PCB, so the, lay the layout may uh, move around a little bit. But let's go ahead and power this up and see some of the demos that are created so far uh, with some of the, the basic drivers. So first, we're going to connect up our uh, prop plug. We're going to connect our 5 volt DC, and then we connect up the Ethernet. And you can see that uh, if I turn off the light, there, you'll see a little bit better. We got a couple of the user LEDs, or sorry, a couple of the WizNet LEDs are uh, on, telling us we got power, telling us about our connection status. So let's go over to the PC, and we'll do a couple demos. Okay, the first demo I'm going to show you is a demo that uses the UDP protocol and it simply uh, echoes the data back and forth uh, from a program that sends UDP. Over on the right side of our monitor we have a, uh, a UDP test tool and you set up the IP address and the port number to send a packet to and you set up the packet and then uh, in a moment here we'll send it and we should see the data echo back over here. On the left I have the Parallax Serial Terminal program open and we're going to go ahead and power on our SpinnerNet web server module here. And in just a moment, there we go, we got some data coming in. And we got a basic header here, and then it's telling you about the address settings, such as the, the IP address, the subnet address, and the MAC address that we're using in our demo. We can also see that the sockets, uh, the socket being used in this, is initialized and set up and now we are waiting to receive data. So if we go over here to our test tool and I click send the packet we're gonna see over here that we received 24 bytes and we echoed it and it was sent. And over here we're gonna see that we received a bunch of bytes and if we look down here it says total bytes sent 16, total received 16. And uh, the 16 doesn't match the 24 because you need to remember that in the WizNet chip that there is an 8-byte header added on top of the UDP for indicating the um, the address that it, the packet was received from and the amount of data and the, the sockets. So that's why the uh, propeller there is reporting 24. And we can go ahead and send that packet again and you can just see it if I click on it multiple times uh, the data that we get. And that was the UDP demo. Now I'd like to show you the TCP server demo using the Parallax SpinnerNet web module. Over here on the right, we have a TCP test tool set up. Uh, with TCP, it's, uh, it establishes a connection with the, with the client or the server, and then it'll transfer data, where with UDP, it just sent data out, hoping it got there. So on the left side of this software, we have the client portion, and then we have the Parallax Spinner, uh, sorry, Parallax Serial Terminal set up here on the left. I'll go ahead and reset our SpinnerNet module 
and we'll see the uh, connection information show up here, the settings, uh, the IP addresses that we've configured. And when we look here, we see that we're going to open our, our uh, socket and port and that we're going to set that to listening. That means the SpinnerNet module is set up as a server. It's listening and waiting for a client to connect to it. And in fact, that's what it says, waiting for a client to connect. If we go over to our test tool on the right, and we're going to go up to the top here and we're going to click on connect. When we click connect over here in the serial terminal it says connection is established. Now we can send a packet and we're going to wait for it to be echoed. So I got another packet set up here and we're going to send that packet and we can see that a packet was received and echoed back by seeing the data come back over here. So we can do multiples of these. We got some data down here about um, the bytes sent and over here the bytes received and echoed and they should be matching if we clear the logs here clear that send the packet we're gonna see we sent 21 bytes over here we received 21 bytes we echoed it and we got 21 bytes back so then at the end of our connection we're gonna have our client go ahead and disconnect here and over on the spinnernet module we can see the connection disconnected and now we're waiting for another client to connect and that is the TCP server demo. And for our last demo, I would like to show you the SpinnerNet module serving a web page. Now remember, these are just basic demos. Um, the actual firmware has a long, long ways to go. And this web page, it's going to be served right out of the firmware. Um, in the future, the web serving will be uh, based on uh, files on the SD card. So the first thing to do, I'll reset our SpinnerNet module, and I have the web demo loaded in there. And over here in the serial terminal here, we're going to see the uh, initialization, just like we did on other demos. And on the TCP server demo, we saw the socket get open and then go into a listening state and waiting for a client. Well, we do the exact same thing here, except for we're going to be listening on port 80, which is a commonly used web port and we're going to be waiting for a client and in this case it's Internet Explorer that we have on the left side or on the right side of our screen. And I'm going to browse over to the IP address of our SpinnerNet module which I can get from the left side and we see a hello world show up. Now this is a cached version of the page that you're seeing uh, and if I click refresh there we go we see over here on the left that the SpinnerNet served to page one and we got page one over here and if I hit uh, refresh many times, you're going to see this counter, which is a counter, a variable in the demo program that just increments each time the page is served. And you can see the page gets served in over here. Now, in creating this demo, I noticed something interesting. I'm going now to Chrome, Google's browser. And I again got the same web page in there, and I'm going to hit refresh. And you'll notice that the number says 11, but we see that we've served. Uh, page number 12 over there and if I hit refresh multiple times you're seeing that this goes from 15 to 17 to 19 to 21 so it appears uh, the Chrome browser for some reason or another is actually hitting the web server twice to get the page um, but again it could also be something in the demo but I noticed it with Chrome and if we 